Hello, hello, hello. Um, Michael and I have been going through the Onboard XR Q system. Um, he's been unpacking a lot of the functionality and we're trying to break them down into these micro examples. So if you want to join us, we are basically going through the Q system and I'm going to edit this down into little pieces so that everybody can watch for each little uh, function or feature of Onboard XR. I'll take this moment to talk a little bit about animation timelines. Um, one of the powerful things that um, the Q system supports is having a bunch of coordinates that play one after another. So you can create much more complex animations uh, in a small spot. So these animations that we've been doing with the scale, we can also do with position and rotation. Um, rotation, when you put them in, is actually in radians, not uh, in degrees, like you would think. Um, so all I have to do is just change rotation and then I can do, do something crazy. So Brendan, I'm gonna make you spin around really fast around your y-axis. Another thing about these uh, animations is that um, the way that we're interfacing with um, the user input system, so the Q and E buttons versus the click and drag versus the joysticks versus just moving your head through space, uh, can sometimes be confused by that. So I okay. put in a little, um, an extra timeline right at the beginning of each rotation cue to make sure you're just snapped to a regular position and then uh, the the actual animation starts. So in so this, you're, you're gonna be- You're locking me and then moving me, basically. Correct, correct. Cool. And I'll show both ways. So this is locking and then moving, and then I'll show you without locking first. So here we go. Wee! I'm spinning. Cool. I feel like I'm spinning, but slowly looking down. I feel like I'm spinning I, I along. There we go. This should be more vertical. Um, I cool. left in ones instead of zeros for the X and Z axis. So cool. it's like you should finish. Man, that would be so and... nauseating in the headset. I know it. Yeah. <laughs> can you do that more slowly, just so we can see yeah. like what a, a function of that might be? Yeah. Oh, Ooh. wee! Sorry, I did it without uh, without locking you first. So this is what happens when you don't lock before you move. Okay. Um, let me put it. Let me put it in a locking function so you just see the uh, the basic basic kind of stuff. That was fun. That was like a tumble. Really? Uh, here we go. So you'll snap, and then you'll do a very yeah. slow uh, slow animation. So. Um, let me show a little bit of the NPC cues. Um, all the animations uh, with rotation are very, very slow because like Brendan said, it can be very nauseating. Um, Especially in headset. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, based off of what we learned before, once, if we wanted to like turn the audience somewhere, so we like lock them, we turn them, and then we unlock them, could they move freely or would it break their neck? I think you might actually fix it by snapping them at the very end of the queue. Cool. Um, here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, I'm putting you on a looping function um, that's just gonna spin you in a circle slowly over ten seconds, over and over again. Okay. Um, try, try clicking and dragging and seeing what happens as you're doing it. So I clicked and dragged. Does it seem okay? I think so. I mean, I don't feel like the world is Dutch, so okay. I don't know. But I, because I'm looping, we can't stop me, right? Well, I can. I I think I can actually override it with another. Oh, let's, let's actually test it. If I just give you a, oh, it does stop it. Okay, so now. Sure. Yep, I've stopped, and now I'm freely walking around, and I'm freely looking around. Yeah. Sweet. That's awesome. Awesome. Um, I think the neck breakage that happens with uh, rotation cues is when we're manipulating both the X and Z axes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you another looping. Well, actually, not a looping cue, but a 10 second cue. As you are moving through the uh, through the animation, try mm -hmm. looking around. Um, and then we'll see kind of once you once you land at the end if you're still got a broken neck. Um, and I am gonna have at the very end reset you to a regular rotation. So this is just to 
animate you all wonky through the space and then we will snap you back to uh, the regular orientation. Cool. So let's see what happens. So Ooh. try, oh, oh, oh gosh. I'm so fast, but I'm playing around with, I'm looking around okay. as best I can. <laughs> I gave, my parameters were way too big. All right, so now I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm definitely can sideways. You, can you see on my screen? Oh no, yeah, head. there's the neck break that we're talking about. And which is so sad. Head. It just rotates me with a broken neck, <laughs> which is so sad. Yeah. <laughs> so right now it is, we, we do need to be very careful about messing with people's orientation, uh, with our audience members orientation uh, as we're doing things. Because we'll have people joining on mobile, on desktop and on headset. And currently only headset uh, is not affected by the neck breakage situation. So um, I don't anticipate anyone having a, a use case that they need to use the uh, the rotation uh, cues for moving or manipulating audiences. Um, but, you know, you never know. Yeah. Something that I do want to note is we are, we are looking over different ways you can manipulate avatar position, rotation, and uh, scale. You mm -hmm. cannot, while you can have multiple coordinates in one uh, queue, you cannot manipulate more than one attribute in, in one queue. So if you wanted a animation where people are flying across, uh, are flying across the world and they also grow really big at the same time, you would need two separate queues for the position and the, um, and the scale. Gotcha. But could you then group those queues? Yeah. Yeah, so you would put them in a queue group so that they happen simultaneously. Are you flying back quite slowly? I am flying back quite slowly. Quite slowly. Um, so I am going to make a little animation through this column. Um, so whenever I'm working with position, oftentimes I will just place my avatar in space and then just use the query selector to get the position of my uh, avatar wherever I want it. So when I was doing the cinematic mode for NPC, I was doing a lot of this manual keyframing of um, in the world, in the environment we were working with, placing my avatar where we wanted to be and then uh, using that to enter the data. Can um, you show me that queries process? Yes. So um, if you look at the one on my left, um, can you see my split screen? Yes. So if you can see my uh, open developer tools down here, uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to just position my avatar kind of wherever I want it. I want to make this nice little accelerating animation through this uh, little pathway. Uh, so I'm going to go to where I want my avatar to start, go to document.query selector. And then I am looking for an element with the ID called avatar rig. So I'll do hashtag avatar dash rig. I actually mistyped, I, not query selection, but query selector. And then object 3D, which is the 3D mesh of the avatar rig and then position. Um, and those coordinates, I want to be my starting coordinates. So I'll go back up to my uh, queue where I change position now. And I will have this X, Y, and Z, I'll just copy paste and put them in as my starting X, Y, and Z coordinates. And for those that felt comfortable doing something like that, is that a good way to also place your avatar where you want a prop or something to spawn and then grab those query uh, orientation points? Yes. So I always recommend doing uh, doing this kind of keyframing for animations in the actual hub's room rather than in Spoke or any sort of editor. When it renders out from Spoke, oftentimes the, the coordinates will shift a little bit. So it's mm. best to do this kind of keyframing in the space. If you're manipulating an object too, you don't just have to grab the coordinates of your avatar, you can also grab them of the object itself. Um, so I can show that when we're manipulating objects a little bit, but um, 
you don't just have to stand where the object goes and and move it you can actually um just carefully place the object too cool um so brendan this is going to just quickly snap you over to this spot it's not going to change your rotation or scale but you should end up right where i am cool we and so oh there you are Oops. um you took a minute. well yeah while you were um you were able to look around freely while you were doing that animation which is really nice for uh for the participants not to be forced to look in any direction um so so we can use this to move audience members to a specific point kind of like a little bit of a, a ride um yeah. to take them somewhere but also a cool function that we found and i actually borrowed this from the welcome to respite show that i'm in in vr chat is they have a recall button so let's say that i'm a bad audience member and i decide i want to go explore this while you're doing the show back where michael just cued me he can now recall me come by hitting back. that button and do i come back i'm acting over here man don't miss my big monologue yeah. so this is a great way to recall the audience to a specific point while letting them have that agency to wander through the world you can then make sure you recall them back to a point for a specific moment of the show and what's also nice is uh, we do have a function, which I'll show in a little bit, for recalling an audience within a radius of a waypoint that you specify and spoke. Um, so that's if you don't want to worry about coordinates or feel like you want the audience within the general area of a certain waypoint, you can put it in spoke. They will be pulled within uh, like three or four meters of that. Uh, cool. So that's another way to do the recall as well. That also um, keeps the audience from stacking up on top of each other and like kind of being inside of each other's bodies, which is very weird when you're in headset and you suddenly are inside of somebody else. <laughs> a little, a little bit uncomfortable. I'm not doing anything special with the easing at all or the uh, kind of the delay or the duration. Um, I'm just doing the basic pathway, but you can make uh, some animations a bit nicer. Um, I actually might do a little bit with the easing uh, and touch on that right now, which is um, animations. They don't just have to be linear, which means you're traveling the same speed over um, over a, a certain path, but they can also be um, they can accelerate into that path and decelerate into that path. Uh, so I think what I'm going to have right now is, Brendan, I'm going to recall you to that spot over the course of five seconds. You're going to wait for three seconds, and then you're going to animate um, over to the end of this archway in uh, an accelerating pattern. So ease in sign. Um, and you will have a hard stop. You won't decelerate at the end of it. You'll uh, have kind of an abrupt start. Cool. Do you want me to look around while this happens or just let it happen? You're welcome to. I would recommend just looking forward along the pathway to get the sense of that uh, that acceleration. Cool. Great. So I'm recalling you to that starting position over five seconds. You'll wait for three and then you'll uh, accelerate over this pathway. Cool. Um, now, to show the next baby step of this, can you now add going under this arch and through it? Because I'm kind of yeah. about to run into it, and this shows that like on this whole um, kind of linear path, you can also not only change acceleration on the points, but you can actually change the X, Y, and Z to actually move people through a complicated or a more complicated trajectory. And we did this through the tunnel into the heart for the octopus in Onboard 3 and in NPC, where we actually brought someone inside this weird ventricle that brought them inside the heart of the character. And it felt like you were going through this winding tunnel, mm -hmm. even though it was just animating them to different points along a linear path. Yeah. So I'll actually bring you between both of the arches, get an extra fancy. Um, mm -hmm. And I will have you, um, while you accelerate into the animation, I'll have you accelerate or decelerate, I guess, um, out of it. Uh, so I'll have that be maybe two seconds for the easing out as you move through those 
Cool. Um, and before you trigger that, I'm going to be a misbehaved audience member. And we were doing this moment of the show, but I decided I wanted to go explore this little thing, even though you were talking over by that original starting point. Yes. I'm going to call you on back. So I'm being recalled over to the main area where you want to start the animation. You're going to wait I'm a few seconds. Manually look. And now I'm being brought through down and around so it was very subtle but it brought us right underneath which was perfect um and so it's just a slight manipulation to make it feel like we're really moving through space rather than just being yoinked somewhere yeah awesome um so i think that that kind of covers animating folks through space 